Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. The War on Drugs is a term used to describe a set of policies and initiatives aimed at reducing the production, distribution, and consumption of illegal drugs. The term was famously popularized by US President Richard Nixon in the early 1970s, who declared drug abuse as public enemy number one and announced a series of policies and laws aimed at curbing drug use and trafficking. However, the roots of the war on drugs can be traced back to earlier periods in US history, such as the Harrison Narcotics Tax Act of 1914, which regulated the production and distribution of opium and cocaine, and the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, which effectively criminalized marijuana use and possession. Since then, the war on drugs has been continued and expanded upon by subsequent US administrations with varying degrees of success and controversy. One of the unintended consequences of the war on drugs has been the strengthening of drug cartels and other criminal organizations involved in the drug trade. This is because the policies and actions taken by governments to combat drug trafficking have inadvertently created a lucrative black market for illegal drugs, which is controlled by organized crime groups. One way in which the war on drugs has helped drug cartels is by driving up the price of illegal substances. This is because the high risks and penalties associated with drug trafficking means that suppliers must charge a premium to compensate for potential losses. As a result, the demand for illegal drugs creates a profitable market that is largely controlled by criminal factions. By controlling the supply of drugs, cartels are able to dictate the price and, in turn, generate huge profits. Another way in which the war on drugs has helped drug cartels is by creating a violent and unstable environment that favors criminal organizations. This is because drug trafficking is inherently risky and a violent business, and the pressure from law enforcement and rival cartels leads to an intense competition for control of the drug trade and drug corridors. Cartels use violence, corruption, and intimidation to protect their drug trafficking operations, and the unstable environment created by the war on drugs enables them to maintain their dominance. Additionally, the focus on the eradication of illicit substances has led to a displacement of drug production and trafficking to other countries where the penalties and risks are lower. Cartels have taken advantage of these opportunities to expand their operations and establish new routes and markets for their products. For example, the shift in drug production from Colombia to Mexico has led to the emergence of powerful drug cartels like Cartel de Sinaloa and Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion. Furthermore, the high demand for drugs in the USA has created a ready market for criminal organizations to exploit. By controlling the supply of drugs, cartels are able to maintain their market share and generate huge profits, which they then use to expand their criminal operations and increase their power and influence. In conclusion, the war on drugs has created a profitable black market for illicit drugs, which has allowed drug cartels and other criminal organizations to thrive. By driving up the price of drugs, creating a violent and unstable environment, and displacing drug production to other countries, the policies and actions taken to combat drug trafficking have inadvertently helped drug cartels to expand their operations and increase their profits. The Mexican state of Michoacán has been ravaged by cartel violence in recent years, with various paramilitary-type drug gangs vying to rule the state due to its strategic location 
which contains important drug corridors, as well as the key drug routes in the state, cartels have also turned their attention to legal trades in the area, such as the agriculture industry, by strong-arming and extorting local lime and avocado farmers. It's also said that local cartels have entered the illegal logging trade, which has been brought to the attention of conservationists in the area, as the trade has devastated local wildlife and has contributed to deforestation in the area. Michoacan has been an unstable state due to criminal activity for well over a decade, and little has changed along the way. Felipe Calderon was the President of Mexico from 2006 to 2012, and his tenure is largely associated with the country's war on drugs. One of the most notable instances of his drug policy was the deployment of the military to the state of Michoacan in 2006, where drug cartels had gained significant power and influence. The aim of this operation was to crack down on drug trafficking and restore order in the state. However, the military's presence resulted in widespread violence and human rights abuses, and the cartels only grew more violent in response. The situation in Michoacan remains unstable to this day, and many argue that Felipe Calderon's war on drugs in the area has been a decisive factor. In recent years, the state has been a hotbed for cartel violence, so much so that the US State Department has suggested that Americans do not travel to the area due to safety risks. Michoacan, along with five other states, were given a level 4, which means do not travel. Michoacan is the host to a number of brutal and powerful drug cartels. Most notably, in the past five years, the state has been under siege from the ongoing invasion by Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. The CJNG leader, Nemesio Osaguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho, is hellbent on taking control of the state. Not only due to the monetary gain of controlling key drug corridors in the area, but also due to personal ambitions of returning to the state where he was born. CJNG are seen as a common enemy among the state's other major cartels, such as Carteles Unidos, a larger collection of smaller cartels who have banded together under the Carteles Unidos name to stop the advances of the brutal CJNG in the state. They have been surprisingly effective in battling the Jalisco-based organization over the past few years, mainly due to their connections with local law enforcement and military personnel who have tended to favor Carteles Unidos. The war between CJNG and Carteles Unidos has produced some of the most brutal cartel propaganda footage, most notably a video dubbed as Ghost Rider. The grisly video shows the horrific torture and murder of a suspected Carteles Unidos member who was captured by CJNG after a shootout in the area. The victim in the video has his face and head covered in rubbing alcohol before having his head set ablaze. By the end of the video, the victim looks like a red talking skull. It is generally considered to be one of the worst cartel videos ever uploaded online. Carteles Unidos aren't the only organization in the area at odds with CJNG. Both Los Viagras and La Nueva Familia Michoacan have also been getting into regular firefights with Cartel Jalisco in the area. More specifically, in the Tierra Caliente region, which also spans Mexico State and Guerrero, as well as Michoacan. Los Viagras, Carteles Unidos, and La Nueva Familia Michoacan have been on good terms in recent years, 
all agreeing that CJNG are a problem that needs to be eradicated in the region. The alliance between the groups has been pivotal in keeping CJNG from completely taking over the state. Despite the alliance, given the turbulent nature of the narco world, it's more than likely that the partnerships will not last long and will end up in backstabbing, followed by bloodshed. The topic of La Familia Michoacan is an interesting one. Historically, they were the dominant cartel in the state of Michoacan. Back in the day, in the 90s and the first decade of the 2000s, they were recognized as one of the biggest cartels in Mexico due to their stranglehold on Michoacan, one of the most important states in Mexico's drug trade. Under the leadership of Nazario Moreno Gonzalez, aka El Mas Loco, the craziest one, the group would form alliances with the likes of Cartel de Sinaloa and even MS-13. Nazario had a cult of personality and run the organization in a quasi-cult religious-like manner. Nazario would take loose inspiration from the Christian doctrine, though he would essentially create his own bible, a book in which would be handed to La Familia members. It essentially acted as a code of conduct for its members. The book would state that no La Familia member could take drugs or alcohol, and that women and children must not be harmed. One of the reasons as to why La Familia were so dominant in Michoacan was due to their hearts and mind strategy. Nazario realized the importance of public support for his organization, and would regularly make charitable donations to local schools and hospitals, as well as paying for new infrastructure in deprived areas. This would garner support for the organization from the public, especially considering the unpopular campaign launched by then Mexican president Felipe Calderon in the area. Some residents felt that the traffickers had shown more consideration and kindness towards them than their own governments. After the death of Nazario Moreno Gonzalez, he would be revered by locals in the region of Apatzingan. He was first reported dead in December of 2010 following a shootout between cartel gunmen and police officers in the area. Nazario and his crew were handing out Christmas presents to villagers before they were tracked down by the authorities. A shootout ensued, leaving at least 11 dead. Nazario Moreno Gonzalez was reported to have been killed in the shootout, and local authorities claimed that cartel members had taken his body before it could be retrieved. Initially, police claimed that cartel members took Nazario's body into the mountains and then buried him. After his first reported death, Locals in Apatzingan honoured him by crafting statues and sculptures depicting him as Saint Nazario, the protector of Michoacan. Rumours however soon began to circulate that Nazario was still alive, and in early 2014, local police stated that he may not have been killed in the shootout as initially claimed. By this time, it was speculated that Nazario had left La Familia to join Los Caballeros Templarios, the Knights nice Templar, which was a cartel that spawned from La Familia. Nazario would be killed for real on the 9th of March 2014, after the Mexican army located him in Tumbiscatio, Michoacan. They tried to apprehend him, though he opened fire on the soldiers before being killed in the shootout. By this time, La Familia Michoacan were a shadow of their former selves. Nazario had previously left them to join Knights Templar before being killed, and other prominent leaders such as Jose de Jesus Mendez Vargas, aka 
El Chango Vargas had been arrested by authorities. Eventually, by the late 2010s, several in law enforcement claimed that La Familia were no longer an active cartel and that they had been completely disbanded. Remnants of the group went on to join other cartels such as Carteles Unidos, Los Viagras, and Cartel del Abuelo. A small section, however, would create a new organization dubbed La Nueva Familia Michoacana, or the New Michoacan Family. The crew would operate covertly in their early years, due to their small numbers, lack of influence, and limited resources. However, they have grown steadily since their inception, back in 2014. The gang are led by the Oles Coaga brothers, Johnny Hurtado and Jose Alfredo Hurtado. Primarily, the group make their money by the production and distribution of methamphetamine, crystal meth. La Familia Michoacana has long been involved in methamphetamine production and distribution, and has a wealth of experience to draw upon. They are also involved in the distribution of fentanyl, but not the production. Though not as deadly as fentanyl, methamphetamine is extremely destructive. Today, cartels produce methamphetamine with chemical shortcuts in the form of pre-precursors, which allows them to avoid heavy restrictions on methamphetamine and fentanyl's traditional precursor chemicals. The resultant phenyl 2 propanone or P2P methamphetamine is more dangerous and users have an increased likelihood of developing severe mental illness after consumption. The future of La Nueva Familia Michoacana remains unclear, yet the cartel's recent decisive actions indicate it will continue to revitalize and grow in power at a regional level. The control of the Lazaro Cardena seaport will be crucial to the cartel's future. While it is involved in multiple criminal economies, including kidnapping, illegal mining, extortion, methamphetamine trafficking remains essential. The cartel's fentanyl processing and trafficking abilities remain doubtful, but access to precursor and pre-precursor chemicals illicitly smuggled into Lazaro Cardenas from Asia offers the possibility of expansion. It isn't exactly known how large the cartel truly is, though, according to former DEA chief Mike Vigil, the Nueva Familia Michoacana has the potential to be among Mexico's most powerful cartels, though, it operates very differently from the CJNG. They do not want to move rapidly and expand as quickly as possible, said Vigil. They move more slowly and consolidate power as they grow. At the start of December 2022, a video of around 40 gun-toting men declaring that they were members of the Familia Michoacana and that they would clean up Milpa Alta a vast and largely rural borough in southern Mexico City put the capital's authorities on high alert. This video followed a slew of violent events that showed the cartel may be returning to power. La Nueva's main adversary at this current time are CJNG, and the conflict has produced some incredibly graphic videos that makes the skin crawl. The most notable execution video surrounding the conflict would be the murder of El Vargo, a suspected La Familia member who was dismembered by CJNG on film. La Nueva have also uploaded their own graphic propaganda videos, one depicting the torturous execution of two CJNG members where they were stabbed before eventually being beheaded. On the 2nd of April, 2023, La Nueva would upload a new video showcasing a depraved act of barbarism. It's unclear as to where the video was originally uploaded, 
but it may have been potentially sent to narco news blogs. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? The video is a short one at only 21 seconds in length, though it is incredibly brutal. It said that the gruesome murder was filmed somewhere in the Tierra Caliente region. In regards to the victim, it is unclear as to what rival criminal faction he belonged to. However, many assume that he was affiliated with CJNG. I've been running this channel for nearly two years now, and have covered the worst of the worst when it comes to cartel violence on film. I have to say, this video contains the most traumatic and haunting screams that I have ever heard, to the point to where they made my skin crawl and sent a cold shiver through my body. As you play the video, all you hear is pure commotion and animalistic guttural screams. The video is shot during daylight in a rural type area. As you start the video, you see a gang of heavily armed La Nueva Sicarios standing around the shirtless victim who is being held down by several cartel members as he screams for his life. A man in the crowd can be heard shouting, make him suffer, don't scream you son of a bitch. The victim is writhing around on the ground, attempting to free himself of the Sicarios who are holding him down on the dirt floor. The cameraman then moves closer to the scene. You see a man kneeling down next to the victim as he is being held, but initially it is hard to make out what he is doing, though he is reaching for the victim's abdominal area. You can see blood on the ground, as well as on the victim's face and chest. The man continues to struggle on the ground, and in doing so, he gives the cameraman a better angle to see what is going on. You see the Sicario, who was kneeling down next to the victim, drop a knife on the ground. He then reaches into the victim's stomach, grabbing his intestines as he pulls them out. The victim has had his stomach cut vertically open. The crowd laughs as the Sicario pulls out several feet of the victim's small intestines. You see other Sicarios in the crowd also filming the grisly murder, which potentially means there are longer versions of this clip out there. Whether they end up online, however, is doubtful though they would potentially shed light on what happened before and after this video was filmed. The sights of the Sicario grabbing a handful of intestines and pulling them out of the victim's body is absolutely disgusting to watch, and the horrific screams compound the absolute misery of the video. It's only a short one, and there isn't all that much to explain. Quite frankly, I probably have not properly conveyed just how horrific this video truly is. I'd implore you that you do not search for it. It's certainly one of the most brutal cartel videos released in the last couple of years or so. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it if you can enjoy this sort of content. Many of you recommended this case as the video was released very recently, so thank you to all who recommended this to me. It certainly caught me off guard to a certain degree, I can't lie. And if anyone else out there has any topics that they would like to recommend, follow me on Twitter, drop me a DM, and I can certainly have a look at it for you. The link to my Twitter will be in the pinned comments, as will a link to my Twitch, after every video that is premiered on Friday, I always go live on Twitch, so it would be nice to see you over there. But anyway, as always, thank you guys for the support, it is much appreciated. 
I am grateful that you guys, you know, still send case recommendations, things of that nature. You let me know when certain things are going on, uh, particularly in the cartel world. So thank you guys for all of your support. It is much appreciated. But yeah, as always, stay safe. And I'll catch you on the next one.